Malmö. 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 Hey, you guys! It is William Colling from Movie Blogs, and this is super exciting. Sweden's SVT has confirmed that Malmö will host Eurovision 2024. It is only July, but we already have a host city. You guys are already booking trains, planes, and hotel rooms. In fact, there are none left at the moment in Malmö. Um, and also in Copenhagen across the Orison Strait. You guys, shall we talk about it? Let's do this! All right, Malmo will host Eurovision 2024 inside Malmo Arena. Many of you are familiar with this venue. It's a regular stop on the Melody Festival and Tour. And of course, it hosted Eurovision 2013. It's got a capacity of 15,500. If you compare that with Liverpool, the MS Bank Arena has a capacity of 11,000. So this is a bigger arena. Of course, they had to take out seats and stuff for the green room if the green room is in fact in Malmö Arena. In 2013, the green room was in a separate building. The point is this. Malmö Arena has lots of experience hosting music concerts. I'm just here on Wikipedia, and I can see they've hosted Lady Gaga, Bob Dylan, Cliff Richard, Tom Jones, Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna got canceled. I actually attended my first ever Melody Festival and event in this building in February 2011. That was a heat. Linda Bensing, Nikki Borg, Love Generation, Linda Pritchard. You remember Linda Pritchard? Something came up alive. This is what SVT's CEO, Hannah Stierna, had to say. Hundreds of millions of TV viewers will follow the broadcast from Sweden. The Eurovision Song Contest fulfills a particularly important function in these times of war in Europe and it is with great respect that we take on the event. Malmö is a creative city with a rich cultural life that can create a music festival for the whole of Europe in a sustainable way, not least financially, because the arena, communications, and logistics are already in place. Well, she is obviously keen, but if you scroll Twitter or our Instagram or our Facebook page or our website, you'll see a lot of divisive comments. This is from Instagram. W underscore Montia underscore writes, this was literally the worst possible option. The city might have the arena, but it is literally missing the rest of the infrastructure needed. Hotel capacity is really low, not many bars or restaurants, and in general, a small and underwhelming city with very little to offer. But Emmy 85 pe wrote back, and she does not agree. She writes, I lived in Malmö three years. It's not that bad. Come on. And you have Copenhagen next door. It's good Stockholm is taking a break. But what does Debin think? He sent us this poorly recorded video, but here's a photo with the audio. The word on the street is we are one, but it should be hashtag we are returning. Yes, that's right. Reporting from London, Devon Adarami, but Malmo will be hosting Eurovision 2024. How do I feel about that? Well, I like it. I like Malmo, you know, and it gives you that Twin City experience. Of course, they can co-host with Copenhagen and that's a good thing, right? Share the moment, you know? Let's all come together. And hashtag we are returning. Hashtag we are returning. So guys, we'll see you in Malmo. Bye! So as you know, there were three other cities that submitted bids to host Eurovision 2024. They were, of course, Stockholm, Gothenburg, and... <laughs> And yesterday, the Swedish newspaper Aftonbladet, their lovely Eurovision reporter Torben Ek, he explained why the other cities didn't get it. He wrote that Malmö was literally the only city that bid that met the criteria. So they almost won by default because everybody else couldn't do it. So first you've got Gothenburg. They've got the Scandinavium Arena, but it's 50 years old. And that means that the roof, the roof would have to be reinforced in order to hold the really heavy, increasingly heavy lighting rig from at Eurovision where they hang all the stuff, they have all the lights. Um, you know, it requires a really strong roof and they'd have to reinforce it. 
Um, and he also pointed out that the arena is 50 years old and resembles a small lump of concrete. So it's not necessarily that fashionable. Not the most gorgeous thing, but I think um, that notion of age beyond design is really about the roof not being strong enough to support the lighting rig. This user on Twitter, AED Wilkin, had the funniest meme. They said, this is SVT to the Scandinavian via Nini Leaks from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You are very old and you need to play your age and not 12. You are an old lady. So then you've got gorgeous coastal town and got popular beaches and campsites. Ooh, and one of the longest water slides in Europe at the indoor water park, Paradise bought it. Ah. But anyway, the big problem for them is there are only two flights a day to get there and they only hold 50 people. So, you know, like you're not gonna be able to get tens of thousands of visitors and indeed delegations um, to the city efficiently. And if you take a train, um, according to Afton Blood, it would take 10 hours and 40 minutes to get there from Malmö. So yeah, that's just really difficult. And then also there aren't enough hotel rooms. And then lastly, of course, Stockholm. You guys already know this. Friends Arena was the huge fan favorite to host Eurovision, an incredible venue, host the Melody Festival and final. What is the capacity like 60,000? It's huge. Um, but Taylor Swift, our girl Tay Tay, she's got three concert dates, May 17, 18, 19. And SVT needs the venue for, I think, six weeks, maybe four weeks before, a week or two after to deconstruct. So it's just not practical to have it there. So Malma, according to Aftonblad, it really won by default. Now, a lot of people are complaining about this choice on our website, across social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Writing on the Wooly Blog's website, Bra writes, Denmark's Copenhagen is the real winner here. Last time, a lot of fans stayed there, ate there, spent time and money there, and only went to Malmö for the live shows. Now, this is a practical consideration. Fans have been trying to book hotel rooms in Malma, but they've either been reserved, it appears, or they've already been snatched up, snapped up. So people are having to go to Copenhagen to get a room. It's only like 20 minutes on the train, so it takes no time at all. So it's not actually like having to stay in Copenhagen is a bad thing, because let's face it, Copenhagen, there's a lot more to see there. There's a lot more to do there. This is Nikki. She writes, Copenhagen hospitality must be delighted with this news. I mean, me, my friends, like a whole third of the fans had to stay there in 2013 because Malama didn't have room or space enough. And they didn't promise SVT not to hike up prices as the bidders did. ka -ching! Davida writes, you might be onto something. I just checked Malma on the booking.com website from May 6th to May 12th, and it says there are no empty rooms left already. Copenhagen, on the other hand, has plenty of economic offers on the plate. In addition to that, Copenhagen is way better linked via cheap planes. It takes roughly 45 minutes for me to fly from Vilnius to Copenhagen, for example, and I think Denmark will be the biggest winner of them all. I also think Dance Melody Grand Prix will be a big winner. After several years of non-qualification, maybe, you know, this opportunity to have a home Eurovision will kind of kick the stink and get producers rolling, get artists submitting. Of course, when Sweden... When Sweden hosted Eurovision back in 2000, Denmark won with the Olsen brothers. When Sweden hosted Eurovision back in 2013, Denmark won with the Melito Forest. In 2016, when Sweden hosted, oh yeah, Lighthouse X, they didn't do so well. Look, but often, often Denmark kind of picks itself up when it's in Sweden because they want to do well there. For me, as a working blogger slash journalist at Eurovision, I'm not so bothered by the host city because I end up just working anyways. But what I can say is this. Every time I've been to Malma, I've had a really nice time. I always felt safe. It was walk well. Actually, I didn't feel safe once. I was wearing a Stone Island jacket. Like, I didn't realize that Stone Island was sometimes associated with, like, different rival football teams. Um, and I was taking pictures in the town square wearing a Stone Island jacket. And all these guys were like... I thought they were waving or smiling. I'm like, hey, but they were braying. You know, they, they saw me as an aggressor because I was wearing Stone Island. So a cop came up to me and was like, um, you probably shouldn't be around here in that jacket. 
Anyway, long story short, if you don't wear a Stone Island jacket, you're probably good. Um, but I've always had a really good time in Malibu. And I actually asked some Melody Festival and stars back in 2016 what they loved about Malma. This is what they had to say. We caught up with some of our favorites after rehearsal and just had to ask them how to spend our week. Uh, well, I think just walk around in the city because it's really cute. I really like it. It's um, just to enjoy the city. And, uh, but now when I have kids, they have so much good playgrounds for kids. They have a lot of theme parks and stuff like that, so that's nice. And if you don't have kids, I think you should go down to the, to the ocean and just uh, look at it. And if it's summer, take a, take a bath down there with the one you love and eat something good. And, Fantastic. Thank Have you some again. beautiful sex on the beach. Amen. <laughs> Amen, sir. <laughs> I feel quite comfortable here and I like the town and, and just strolling, you know, uh, at the, uh, in the city or wherever, out to the Kallebad, that, you know, it's so beautiful and it's, uh, yeah, I like it. It's nice to be here. <laughs> they rebuilt a whole area of the city where all these shipyards were before and this is now a hyper-modern uh, part of the city. Uh, so they've done a really good job and uh, when we were here in 13 we stayed here for like six or eight weeks and we totally <laughs> fell in love with the city. It's, it's an amazing city. It's very vibrant. It's very here and now and you, you can actually feel how close it is to, to a capital. You, you get that influence or over the bridge here. <laughs> Oh wow, they do love Malmo. And you can watch my full Malmo tourism video link in description. It'll also be linked at the end of this video in the cards. But look, if you have to stay in Copenhagen, that's not the worst thing in the world. You'll have a great time and you'll still experience Eurovision. But I think Malmo, because it is smaller, it will feel like a cauldron of energy. You'll see Eurovision everywhere. Whereas if Eurovision was in a bigger city, sure, you'd have more museums or, you know, more things to do or C, but like the energy would be more diffuse. I don't know. I'm fine with Malma. You know, I would have preferred Stockholm. I would have preferred Gothenburg. Um, but you know, I, Sweden does a great job hosting Eurovision. They love Eurovision, so they'll make you feel welcome. They'll be Eurovision Village. They'll have satellite events. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not as down on this as a lot of people, but at the same time, I don't really go as a tourist. So I could get, if you're going for a week or so as a tourist, you wanna see stuff and do stuff. I will say this, there's a fantastic shopping mall opposite Malmo Arena, so you can get your food, get your Joe in the juice real quick and real easy. And you can also get my book, Wild Dances Real Easy, available on Amazon. Blackwell's, Blackwell's Bookshop actually ships to a lot of countries free of charge. The book is Wild Dances, My Queer and Curious Journey to Eurovision. Anyways, that's what I think. What do you think? Are you excited that Malma is going to host Eurovision 2024? Do you think you'll end up staying in Copenhagen? Have you already booked? How's the pricing been? Are you excited? Do you love the arena? Let us know here on Weebly Vlogs. We'll see you later. Bye!